Have you heard the term GKI being thrown around in the keto community but have no idea what it is? Well, in this video, I'm going to go over what GKI is, how to calculate it, and what those values actually mean. <laughs> According to Keto Mojo, it is a biomarker for tracking your metabolic health and your state of ketosis. The GKI was invented by Dr. Thomas Seafried for the management of brain cancer, but regardless, it is very valuable for the keto community. GKI stands for Glucose Ketone Index. Simply put, it is your ratio of glucose to ketones in one single value. It gives us a good idea of where we stand metabolically and how much fat ketones we are burning. If you're like me and you have measured your ketones, ketone levels throughout the day, you will see that ketone levels can fluctuate. This depends on many variables, if you're stressed, if you had too much protein, if you haven't eaten at all, and if you got a good night's sleep. This is why having your GKI is very important, because it gives us that single number that tells us where we stand in general, so that we can hack our metabolism to get better results. But who am I anyway? Well, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Talita from Shrinking with Keto, and throughout my ketogenic journey, I have lost over 190 pounds and reversed my type 2 diabetes. Throughout this journey, I have helped and coached many people reach their goal, and I hope to do the same for you. So let's see what these numbers represent anyway. If your levels are over 9, well, then you're not really in ketosis. But if your levels are between 6 and 9, then you're in a low level of ketosis, which is ideal for weight loss and health maintenance. If your GKI is between 3 and 6, you're in a moderate level of ketosis, and it's perfect for those with type 2 diabetes and obesity insulin resistance, metabolic or endocrine disorders. Now, if you manage to get your GKI between one and three, you're in a high therapeutic level of ketosis. This is ideal for those who are using keto therapeutically for the treatment of diseases such as cancer, epilepsy, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, traumatic brain injury, and chronic inflammatory disease. And in the rare cases, usually done with extended fasting, that you reach a GKI lower than one, well, then you're at the highest level of ketosis, something that is very difficult to achieve without doctor supervision. Now, these numbers are taken from the Keto Mojo. So it is easy to understand that the lower your GKI is, the more fat you are burning. That's all great, but how do we calculate our GKI? Well, before I tell you this, let me interrupt you for a second. If this is the first time you're seeing this pretty face, let's make sure it's not the last. So please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and ring that bell icon so that YouTube can let you know every time I make a new video for you. And please feel free to ask me anything you want down in the comment section below, and I will try my best to answer every single one of your questions. Fantastic, so let's calculate our GKI. First, you need to take your glucose number, and then you need to take your ketone number. You take your glucose, divide it by 18, then take that result and divide it by the number of ketones you have. Let's see an example. Let's assume my glucose levels are at 100. I divide 100 with 18 and I get 5.55. And let's assume that my ketone levels are at 1.2. I take the 5.55 and divide that by 1.2. That gives me a GKI of 4.6. Now, if you remember, anything between three and six puts us at a moderate level of ketosis, which is fantastic for weight loss. If you got any value out of this video, I will ask you to press the thumbs up button so that YouTube can take this video and push it out to more people that need it, just like you. So there you have it, what the GKI is, how to calculate it, and what the value actually means. And as always, chin up, or you know, the crown slips.